Hello everyone, today I'm going to be doing a book review and the name of the book is going to be called The Mask Maker's Daughter. So if you haven't seen my channel before, you might want to check it out and there'll be some more book reviews. So you can kind of, well, catch up on the um, playlist. Anyways, let's talk more about The Mask Maker's Daughter. Guys, here's two warnings. If you're not this type of magical mask, um, all of those type, then this book isn't going to work out for you and I'm sure you won't really enjoy it. But you can try it. I'm not saying you can't try. It might be a new change, but I'm just giving you a warning. And second warning is that there were some emo emotion, sorry, had a bit of a word mix up there, emotional points in the book. So if you do break down quite easily, then this book also isn't going to be your type. But you can try. Yeah, you can always try. Anyways, let's start talking about the Mars Makers book. The thing I really liked about this book is it's set in a country. I don't know much about geography, so I'm not really sure. Um, the country called Venice. And I really admire Venice because they don't use roads, they use water. It's a bit like lakes, like street lakes instead of street roads. So they use that and I find that quite inspirational. So it's um, set in Venice and you can see the sea over there. And I'm going to read the blurb to you now. And if you don't know what a blurb is, check out my last videos, as I said, and I'll give you an explanation. I'm sure of it. All right, let's start. Colette lives with her mother, making beautiful dresses for wealthy women of Venice. She's never known her father, and her mother won't speak of him. But Colette's embroidery moves and dances, and she's sure there's magic in her blood. And then Colette discovers the truth. Her father is a famous mask maker and a powerful magician. Oh, let's see what happens if you read the book. Chapter one. Colette ran her fingers gently over the silk. She flinched a little as her rough, roughened fingertips caught and swiftly tucked her hands away in the folds of her skirt. The silk was too precious to be risk snatching the threads, but she wanted to touch. She wanted to wrap herself in it and feel the cool blueness shining on it, on her skin. It shimmered so glowing blue and green depending on how the light fell, how it folded, how it shifted when she ran her fingers over its gleaming surface. Bones of the mother's shoulders stood out. Ugh, the dust, her mother whispered at last. Only the dust, all these trimmings and scraps and threads. Colette, it all makes dust. I'll sweep it up, Colette promised eagerly. I didn't sweep properly yesterday. That's why you might be coughing. And I'll wash the floor, ma. There won't be any dust left to catch in your throat then, will there? They're coming, her mum. Her mother sprang up, ignoring Colette and clutching at the back of her chair to steady herself. I hear them. Get out to the shop, Colette. You're faster than I am. Don't keep ma Madame the Countess waiting. Colette could hear them too as she hurried out of the workroom, fixing her face into a stubborn grimace of welcome. The Madame's page was stomping over the paving stones to hammer on the door and she flung it open before it, he could damage his paintwork. The boy glared at her and then stood back to usher his mistress. He was edging irritatedly through this narrow door. Her dress was wide enough that she had to turn sideways and the maid was fussing over this satin Colette didn't realise, I mean, recognise the dress. It had come from another tailor. Ma would have sweet-talked the countess away that, from the heavy pattern stuff. She looked like a walking flower bed. 
even in a delicate guiled mouth and jasmine clustered around her eyes. Where is your mother, child? the countess demanded. I'm here, my lady, Colette's mother hurried in, dropping into a curtsy and tugging Colette to whiff down with her. Colette tried not to hear the faint wheeze in mother's chest as they bowed their heads. Ma always blamed dust or the consistent damp that seeped through the stonework from the canals or the wood fires they burned to keep the damp off the silks. It was no wonder she caught she kept telling Colette she would be better in the spring, but it's spring now, Colette felt the words rising up in her, even though she couldn't bear to say them out loud. She only and could hope and pray and close her eyes and pretend that Ma would get better. Anyways, if the Countess ordered a new court costume, Colette could buy the herbs to make a set for Ma's throat. Some eggs, maybe, to make a custard to slip down easily. Colette would be even glad if the Countess most rarely bought a blue silk through it made a ape to think of the workroom without its shimmering blue-green light. Would Madame like to see one of the dolls? Ma asked, hopefully. As she struggled upright, we have some entirely new fashion, straight from London, very select, very suited for Madame's delicate col colouring. Colette fought not to let her lips twist into a spark. They all know Madame's delicate colouring came entirely out of little spots of her dressing table that Sophie the maid painted on her pretty blush with a rabbit's foot. The Countess would be unrecognisable without her towering puffed hair and painted face. She would probably look like Ma. Foot. Clo Colette thought, bobbing another curtsy and padding backwards to the shelves to fetch a new English dolls. The Countess peered at them, fingering the fabric. Ma twitted about the wider panties and the Chinese painted door. Chinese painted silk, sorry, and double pleated ribbon trimmings. The dolls lay limp on Colette's outstretched arms, their faces painted with foolish little rosebud smiles, and the Countess pegged them disapprovingly, and her lips twitted, twisted in a pettish little smirk. The same as everyone else's, she murmured. Hmm. The Countess doesn't feel impressed after all. Do you think they'll show you? that her the um silk, the special silk Colette was holding earlier. And her mum um has some wheezing problem. Do you think she has um a sickness? Um will she carry on? Hmm, who knows? And what about the father we heard at the back? Is he dead or alive? Read the book to find out. Alright, I'm going to admit I haven't actually finished this book, so I'm not going to give you any spoilers or anything else. All I can tell you, it's a magical book. Anyways, guys, I think I need to call it off from here, since I took a bit more time in this video. But anyways, I'll see you in my next book review, and please subscribe and hit the like button if you can. Anyways, bye!